Bonjour and welcome to Wow God, worshiping our wonderful God. Now tell me, how was your week? Well, I hope that you're doing glad. But if you're feeling sad, well, guess what? Raise your head up, cause God's gonna turn that frown upside down. Now, for the first timers out there, we welcome you with our warm hugs. And if there are any birthday celebrants out there, well, we from all God wish you a happy, happy birthday, and may God bless you abundantly. Now, make sure to greet everyone in your homes with warm smiles, a hello and a wave. And don't forget to give them a high five. Now, remember that we from Mall God are free. We are good followers and friends. We are respectful and responsible. Be energetic and excited. And make sure to be a good example to everyone. Now, put away all those distractions as we prepare our hearts and our minds to worship and praise our wonderful God. Let's all rise for a call to worship. Psalm 100 verses 4 to 5. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations.
thank you for today and thank you for letting us all come together to worship your name. Thank you for keeping us safe and healthy. Please bless those who are not with us today. Thank you for being our God and loving us. And thank you for teaching us how to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Children, for the past days and weeks, I'm sure there are things that we did somehow before our parents, even before God. Actions that are contrary to what God wanted us to do. Decisions that are contrary to what the Holy Spirit wanted us to do. With those things, let us come to God Confess, ask for his forgiveness. Kids, I'd like to read a scripture for you. The Bible says, As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear Him. God is so compassionate, just like our Father. But God is extending His compassion to those who fear Him. Receive His forgiveness in Jesus' name and be restored. words are true. God gave his words for me and you. Let us open the Bible to Matthew 4 verses 10 to 11. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. This is the word of God. Hi kids! Today we will be discovering God's truth about the very last fruit of the Spirit listed in Galatians 5. Can you tell me what that fruit of the Spirit is? Yes, it's self-control. But before that, let's read together the Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things there is no law. The Bible tells us in this passage that self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. If we are saved, the Holy Spirit is living inside of us, and we can be people who are self-controlled all the time. But as we come to know God more and more, we change. Through Jesus and Him alone, we have the power to be self-controlled. Before we get too far into our lessons, though, we need to talk about what is self-control exactly. Self-control is being in charge of your feelings, actions, and thoughts. 
So basically, having self-control is making yourself do something that is not easy or doing something you really do not want to do. It is showing kindness to someone who just hurt your feelings. It is obeying your mom right away when she asks you to clean your room instead of arguing. It's like when your brother or sister bugs you so much. You just want to hit them. We know that you have to control yourself and not to hit them. Even if you feel mad and angry, we need to stop and think before we say mean or hurtful words. We might be tempted to act out, but don't. If we stop for a moment and ask Holy Spirit for help, He can give us strength to use kind and loving words instead. Self-control actually means in strength in another language called in Greek. It's not easy to have self-control. It's hard work and we need to be strong. We need to be in strength to have self-control. Can you be in strength? Who do you think would be our perfect example of self-control? It's God, Jesus, as a person who never sinned. Jesus practiced self-control perfectly, just like with every other fruit of the Spirit. He is our model. A lot of times, self-control goes beyond just making ourselves do what is right and good. It is also involves fighting against a desire or temptation to sin. We can find an example of this in the Bible, our source of truth. The Bible teaches us that Jesus was tempted by the devil to respond using his emotions and to not trust God's promises. Instead of giving in and making a bad choice, Jesus shows us how to have self-control by stopping and answering the devil with the word of God every time. Let's watch this video, a short story about the temptation of Jesus. Come and see the temptation of Jesus. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth where he grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. Oh, I see. Jesus was baptized by John, and God showed John that Jesus was his chosen one. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness among the wild animals. Oh, hey there, friend. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus didn't eat anything. So he was hungry. Satan came to him and said, Hey! If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus knew God's word, and so he answered, No! The Word of God says people don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so Jesus passed the first test. <laughs> then Satan took him to Jerusalem and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. Aww. For the Word of God says he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Wait. But Jesus said, the Word of God also says, you must not test the Lord your God. No. And so Jesus passed the second test. So Satan took him to the peak of a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. Satan said, I will give it all to you if you kneel down and worship me. But Jesus said, Get out of here, Satan, for the word of God says you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. <laughs> then Satan went away, and angels came and took care of Jesus. And so Jesus passed the third and last test.
The devil wanted Jesus to act based on how he was feeling. What did he feel? He was hungry, but Jesus showed self-control by not choosing what would make him feel better, but by choosing to say what God said. A second time, the devil tempted Jesus again, but Jesus stayed strong and repeated the word of God again. In the third time, the devil tempted Jesus again, but Jesus did what he knew was right. Jesus continued to respond using self-control, and the devil fled away. Even though Jesus was tempted three different times by the devil, Jesus spoke the word of God again, again, and again, which gave him strength and self-control. Instead of giving in to what he felt he wanted in that moment, Jesus trusted what his father said, and the devil ran away. Do you trust what God has said? Are you in strength? Remember to stop and think about what God's words say when you are in a tough place or even a good place. And be sure to follow it when you stop and think before you react, you are showing you have learned self-control. And for our servers, it is found in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Amen. Hi kids! For our kids time today, we are going to make the last craft to complete our Fruit of the Spirit lab book. And it is the craft on self-control. Are you excited? So for today's craft, we are going to make a self-control traffic light craft. To remind us of our lesson for today, that we as God's children should practice self-control so that we can live a life that is pleasing to God and a life that avoids hurting others and ourselves too. So all you need for this craft, kids, are a black piece of construction paper. If you don't have a, a black piece of construction paper, you can use bond paper and just color it black. And the colors of the traffic light, red, yellow and green construction paper just small pieces if you have then you would also need your glue your pair of scissors your coloring materials and a five peso or a ten peso coin that we will be using to trace our circles so this is what we are going to do okay so get your lap book and on the empty part of our folder we are going to put our self-control traffic light so now, get your black piece of construction paper and just make sure that you cut it just the right size for your folder. So I already cut mine just the right size. So now you can do this. Now it's time to make our circles. Get your green, red, and yellow paper and get your 5 peso or 10 peso coin and just trace it. Okay, then cut it. I already cut my circles. There. Then on the circles, we are going to write for the red, you draw a stop sign and write the word stop for the yellow think and for the green go and act wisely so I will post these on the screen you can pause the video and copy them when you're done just get your glue stick them in order 
So the red one, the stop, the yellow in the center, think, and the green, go and act wisely. Okay, so up here, you can write the word self-control. So there we have it, kids, our self-control traffic light craft. To remind us that we should practice self-control and that in everything we say or do, we should remember to stop, think, and go act wisely. Yay! So now we have completed our Fruit of the Spirit lap book. So what's next, kids? Make sure that we memorize the fruit of the Spirit found in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Let's say them together. Ready? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So let us always be filled with the Spirit to walk in the Spirit and be led by the Spirit of God. So see you next Sunday, kids. And don't forget to post your finished Fruit of the Spirit lap book on our Facebook page. Let us pray. Almighty Heavenly Father, as we conclude, O Lord, this week and uh, the following Sunday, the series on the fruit of the Spirit, we are so blessed to have this opportunity to listen, to hear your word speak to us. And I pray, Lord, that as these children, together with their family, are listening and they will continue to listen to you as you talk to them. They may hear you, O oh Lord. They may receive fresh new revelation from you. They may have a discernment that is coming from you, O oh Father. So that as they live a life that manifests a life in the Spirit, they will always demonstrate without fear. They will always show to the world with boldness that indeed they are sons and daughters of yours, O God. Thus, O Lord, I lift to you their lives believing that you continue to bless these children together with their families. Let them grow in faith and 
give them a fresh experience of the Holy Spirit bearing fruit in their life. And now, receive the blessing of God our Father in heaven, the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit, and the redeeming presence of Jesus Christ be upon you now and always. Amen. Amen. Yeah.